So you want to learn how to program, but maybe you're having trouble figuring out how to start? Well, then you've come to the right place. In this series, I will teach you the fundamentals of programming. The first question a lot of people might be stuck at is what language to start with. And honestly, for the fundamentals, it doesn't matter that much. There are a lot of languages to choose from, and while they of course aren't all the same, we can roughly divide them into larger groups. Within each group, the languages are roughly the same, especially when you're first starting out. This also means that the fundamentals you will learn using one language will, in large parts, be transferable to other languages within the same group. And hey, as you get better and better and get more and more practice, what you learn will also help you learn languages in some of the other groups. I won't try to explain further what groups there are and what similarities and differences they have. It isn't really necessary to know when you're first starting out. But most of the languages you might have considered, like Python, GDScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, and many more, are in the same large group. Which is why you really don't need to be afraid of choosing the right or wrong language when you first start your journey into programming. In this series, we will be using the GDescript language as the main example. And we'll be using it within the Godot game engine. For those of you who might not know what Godot is, it's this incredible open source game engine that can help you create games faster than if you had to create everything from scratch yourself. The main reason for choosing GDescript for this series is one, I already create a lot of tutorials for Godot using GDescript. And two, when I first started learning programming, I found it really motivating to work on game-related exercises. And honestly, I also think that working on game-related examples and exercises will help you understand some of the concepts better. Because we won't just be looking at text input and output, but also see in a more visual way what all the things can do. However, even though the main example language in this series will be GDescript, I will also show you examples from other languages such as C Sharp and C++ when it makes sense. Hopefully, this will also help you understand how the fundamentals I teach in this series will be transferable to other languages you might want to work with later on. This course is for absolute beginners. You don't need to have any experience in programming or using Godot. However, you might have an easier time learning if you look around in Godot a bit before and maybe even try to follow a few tutorials. This isn't necessary as the course is for absolute beginners. But having any kind of experience with a topic is always a good thing before trying to learn in a more structured way. This will make it easier for your brain to figure out where to store the new knowledge. Now, because we'll be using GDScript and Godot, you first have to make sure that you have the Godot engine ready on your computer. You can download it either from the Godot homepage or you can get it on Steam. In this series, we will be using Godot 4.3, which is currently the newest version. When you download Godot from their website, you don't need to do anything else to get going. You will then have downloaded an executable, so no need to install anything. To make it easier to go in depth with the specific focus for each video, I've created a GitHub project where I will be uploading all the example files we'll be using in this series. There will always be a link in the description to where you can find the files. If you don't know GitHub, then don't worry. All you have to do to get the project files is go to the link, click here where it says code, and then you can download a zip file with everything in it. 
you can then unpack the files and place them wherever you prefer on your computer. If you are watching these videos while I'm still working on them, then you might have to download the files again between each video to get all the updated versions. But once all the videos in this series are done, then you can just download once in the beginning and it will include all the required files for the series. Once you have the project files downloaded, you can open the project in Godot. When you open Godot, the first thing you'll see is the project manager. Here you can click import, then locate the folder where you stored the unpacked project, click on the file called project.godot, and then click on import and edit. Now everything should be ready to go. This isn't a Godot tutorial, so I won't explain what all the parts in the editor are, just the few we need. For now, we just need to look at the menu here at the top, where it says 2D, 3D, Script and AssetLib. When we click Script, we are then taken to the Script Editor. This is where we can write our code. To the left, you should see a list of the scripts in the project, but if some are missing, then you can go to the File System menu down here and locate them. When you double-click on a script here, it will automatically open in the script menu and be added to the list to the left. The other thing we're going to use is the 2D view as all the examples in this series will be in 2D. You can go to the 2D view by clicking where it says 2D in the top menu. And that is really all you need to know about Godot for now. Again, remember that this series will teach the fundamentals of programming using GGScript as an example, but it isn't really an introduction to Godot or game development as such. Those we can look at later. As the final thing for this episode, let's try to look at a bit of code. We have already downloaded and imported the project for this episode. Here in the 2D view, we can see the simple scene I've set up for this first episode. It just has two coins in the top right corner, and that's it. Now let's go look at the script I also made for this episode. You can open the script by either clicking on the script icon here to the right of where it says first test. Or you can go back to the script view and if the script isn't open or available to the left, then go locate it in the file system menu and double click on it. The file we will be looking at now is called first underscore code dot gd. Okay, so now we have our first example script open. I've included a little bit of all the things we'll be covering in this course. Of course, I don't expect you to understand how any of this works just yet. If you do, then that's fine. You might still learn a few things during the rest of the course. But this course is for absolute beginners, so you don't have to understand any of this yet. The point of this first example project is to give you something you can just experiment with on your own before digging deeper into what it all is in the later episodes. Now, to run our scene and thus also the code, you can click on the play icon up here in the top right corner. What do you see in the scene now? If we close the window and go back to the script, we can try to change one of the numbers. I wonder what happens if instead of 8, we write 6 here in this line. Whenever we change something and want to see what it changed, then we have to run the project again. What do you think our change did to the scene? Try to change some other things in the code. Just jump in 
you don't have to be afraid of ruining anything. If at some point you want to start over, then you can always download the project files and re-import the project again. Some of the future episodes in this course might have additional assignments that will be available for paying members on Patreon or YouTube. But for this first episode, there won't be any specific exercises. Instead, I will just encourage you to experiment with the first example as much as possible. Which parts will change the scene when it is run? Can you find things you can change so the project breaks and won't run? Change as many things you can think of and then maybe a few more. But only change one thing at a time so you can carefully observe if it changes something and what happened. Try to use all your experiments to imagine what you think the different parts of the code does. Use this to start building your very first idea of what parts this code consists of. The more you experiment and try to form your own ideas of what it all does and how it works, the easier it will be for you to follow along and get a deeper understanding of it all in the later episodes. And that was it for this first part of my new series on how to program using GGScript and Godot as an example. I hope you liked this video, and if you want to see more like this, then remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and all that. Bye!